Faith can move mountain. Radio Maria 91.3 FM. The voice of truth. Once again, it's child protection on 91.3 FM Radio Maria. We're here again to talk about our beautiful children, our great today and tomorrow, the ones that make the world around us tick. Again, we're looking at the purpose for today's program. Mothers as the center of the home. Why child protection? It's child protection because all these children that are gifts from God, we know what it takes to have one, the pregnancy, the delivery, nurturing, schooling, all of that. We have to give them all it takes as support. They have rights as human beings. Children's rights also are human rights. We must stand up for their rights. We must protect them from every harm so their environment must be safe. We have to make sure that the environment is motivating enough. It's enabling. It's safe for them. We also have to take note that as much as we try our best to do all of these, some of them still end up being abused. What then do we do? We help them get out of the situation or trauma they must have gone through. We help to ensure that they get back as much as possible, no depression, or we minimize it. We minimize whatever pains they have gone through for those who survive it. As also making sure that these children are not tagged. People don't start pointing fingers at them call them names, condemn them, at the same time, even completely estrange them and neglect them. Some of them are completely removed from their home environment because parents feel they will be tagged also. But that's not what we are here for. We are here to ensure that you do not do just that. You do not tag them, you do not estrange them, you do not stigmatize them. You do not worsen their situation, rather with abundance of love, support, and everything we can put together to get them out of that situation, we must put in place. So today on child protection is Mrs. Momo Miriangela, the child rights advocate. We're going to take things that a mother must hear as our topic. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Yeah, that's nice. He wants to be the next president of Niger Land, and that's very possible. Welcome back to 91.3 FM Radio Maria. It's child protection. And here we're looking at the things a mother must hear. We know who the mother is, the one that has given birth to the child is a mother. Some will say, parent, a man leaves the father and mother and cleaves to his wife and they shall be one flesh. And we're told the first thing is companionship. Then if God blesses you with children, you welcome them and you teach them and help them to dominate the world, their environment, be in charge. So who is the mother then? There's a common saying that every wise woman builds her house. Every wise woman builds her house, which means that the mother plays a very, very significant role in building the house. I would want to replace the word house with home because there are buildings and there are homes. When you talk about the link between the different members of the family, it is the mother. In the family, you have the father to the children and the husband to the wife, the mother. You have the mother to the children and the wife to the man. 
you also have the mother to children that are not her biological offspring because she's there as the link to father, mother, sorry, father, children, relations, extended and nuclear, as well as friends and other institutions. She's the link between the family and the church, the school, the society. And even among the family members, I, like I put it literally, I say the mother has different compartments in her stomach, in her womb. She has the side for color, she has the side for Kemi, she has the side for daddy, she has the side for friend. That is different compartments as in she knows what to slot in at a particular time for stability. She knows what to say to Kemi that will not cause more damage to whatever crisis already on ground between Kemi and Kola or Kemi and uh, uh, um, Musa or Musa and Ubi, whoever. So the mother is a link. She's a liaison person. And that link must be done with wisdom, with a lot of diplomacy, with fairness, with justice. As you're linking them, the children are taking note of every single move you make. As a mother, you are responsible majorly for their habits, not solely responsible. You are majorly responsible for their habits. Your, your womb is the first home, the first space, the first environment the baby knows. And then the baby is born. You cuddle, you nurse. You know, these days the, our, our children say, mommy, don't say talk about breastfeeding, it's nursing. Okay, so we nurse them. As you're nursing the child, his eyes are right into your eyeballs, playing with your fingers, trying to cuddle and all of that. As that child is doing that, the child is taking note of certain things as you react to whatever he's doing, like biting on your nipple. If the child bites on your nipple, the child smiles and does it again. If you don't do anything, the child will keep biting on your nipple whenever you're nursing. But if as young as three, four months, the child bites on your nipple, whether with his gum or whatever, and you flip out your finger a bit on his tie or his lap or somewhere, he looks at you and he doesn't do it again. If he does it, you send out a little of that reaction again. You notice that the baby stops that habit. And then it's time to go to bed. They are going to be there either doing their homework and all that. Ideally, we don't expect that when they are doing their homework, you are letting them sit before the television. Some parents do that carelessly, but if you're doing that or if you've been doing that, it has to stop. You teach the child what to do when he's doing his assignment. But let's start from when he wakes up in the morning. What's the routine in the house? You are the prefect in the house as a mother so that those habits can begin to be formed and the child can take a proper cue on what to do, when to do it, how to do it. It must be done at the right time for the right purpose and must be done properly for the good of all. You begin to teach the child how to live an interdependent life as well as a dependent life. That is to say, first of all, the child becomes independent. Learn to do things himself. At the same time, the child looks up to the younger ones or the, the elder ones to do one or two things. At the same time, the child learns how to cooperate and also how to stand on his own. All of these things are being monitored mostly by the mother because by the pattern we have here in Nigeria, most parents have it that the man as the provider goes far away to make money, goes, you know, for long hours, he's out, you know, trying to make ends meet. Same for the career woman, but 
as much as possible, she tries to put in place things that will help to break some of those um, gaps or rather bridge the gaps when she's not around. As she's in the office, thanks to the GSM, she's calling, have you brought out the stew to tour? It is time for the lesson teacher. Have they changed their uniforms? Have they had their bath? What's next? What's so 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 and so doing? What's Kola doing? What's Obiageli doing? What's Musa doing? That is, she's monitoring even right from the office as the CEO or as the, the, the deputy governor, whatever position he uh, she's holding um, in her office. So as a mother, you help to form their habits. You help to teach them how to study, how to pray, how to have your bath, how to be clean, and how to talk, you know, control or contain your, your anger, self-discipline, discipline, and all of that. Yes, a lot of task, you may say, a lot of it. We're going to talk about what it is for a mother to be the primary caregiver. Don't go away. We'll be back. Yeah, welcome back to 91.3 FM Radio Maria. It's child protection. And what are we looking at today? Mothers, the things that they must hear. Say that the mother is a role model, a mother is a link, a mother is responsible for habits. A mother also is a primary caregiver. Mothers give these conditions and atmosphere in the house that helps the child to be properly adjusted. In a situation where the mother is a very hard, harsh, authoritative at the same time in short authoritarian mother she would not listen she doesn't want to hear it's what she has said that is final and all of that you're teaching your child you're bringing up a child that's going to be maladjusted you're bringing up a child that's going to be a bit of a robot you're bringing up a child that will not know how to help herself when you are not there giving the instructions then you're giving care feeding you're helping her to know exactly when to do what her menses has started or if it's the boy he's beginning to notice certain changes in his body and you're not telling the child what to do at the same time the child is growing now to become maybe saucy rude carrying himself in some way you're not taking note of it to correct you're not giving maybe the right warmth in the family um, their rooms are probably not warm enough or they're not wearing the right clothes or they're not doing the right thing when you have to give care you have to be physically present you have to be you have to give quality time as a primary caregiver you must be on ground you must make sure that these children are getting what they should get at the right time no wrong indulgences no wrong signals among themselves how do they handle their habits there's something to do at a particular time are they attending to it it's time to go to bed will the child tie maybe use use the belt use his jean put on everything and all that right on the bed or the child is going to change to his pyjama or she's going to change to her nightgown is she brushing the right way is she doing the right thing in the bathroom is uh, maybe b baby who is already being weaned has the right meal be, be, been given for the child to know exactly now i'm full i want to do this or do that is the girl in the house that is helping doing the right thing at the same time are you also taking care of that girl because she's also human all of those are chores put together for you as a mother giving care to your child what about the spiritual care saying their prayers before they go to bed grace before meal 
What about courtesy, etiquette? Are you teaching the child how to say thank you, how to say I am sorry, how to say please, how not to talk down on house helps or, you know, snap at you when she's angry, throwing tantrums and not and you not being able to control all of that. These are things that you handle, giving care spiritually, physically, educationally. You're giving the care socially. The child has to be properly adjusted so they grow to become, you know, positively. Um, they, they, they grow to become properly adjusted and they contribute positively to the society. You train a woman, they say you train a nation. And as you do that, the hand that rocks the cradle, they also say, does what? Rules the world. So the religious life or spiritual life, their discipline, all of these depend a great deal. You see, we've been talking about mothers. We're not saying that fathers will go to bed and start snoring. Not at all. Today is mother's time. Tomorrow, we'll talk about fathers. Or rather, by the next um, uh, program, we'll talk about fathers. The discipline of the child also, you all that have been talking, you know, they go side by side. You can't do without that child that is suckling and you're, you're trying to stop the child from biting on your nipple. You're disciplining the child already. That is discipline. Teaching them how to dish for themselves and not taking more than they, more than they can, they can um, finish is also remembering that they, sh they should know when to stop. Teaching them how to remember that you have how many? Four or five of you. So the loaf, the loaf of bread on your table should not be swallowed by only one person. It's teaching them self-control, discipline, how to go to bed, when to go to bed, when to read, when it's time to talk, table etiquette, what to do with guests, don't talk to strangers, don't do this, do this. All of those, most of the time, are initiated by mom or moderated by mother. We'll be taking our calls any moment from now. And our number is 081-084-5555. The number again to call is 081-084-47518. You call us, send SMS, or WhatsApp us. We'll be back soon. Don't go away. Yeah, welcome back to 91.3 FM Radio Maria, the voice of truth. Let's tell ourselves the truth. We want to hear from you because you are very, very precious to us on this program. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello. Good evening. Yeah, it's uh, really very nice. Good evening. Yes, my name is Anne. Good evening, Anne. And how are you? Where are you calling from, please? Okay, um, I call on this one. Okay. Safe, yeah, safe trip. I to, to, sorry, I want to uh, ask a question. Okay. Um, in a situation whereby a mother does all of those points you pointed out. Yes. And you have um, a husband that like, always there, sort of like uh, always kind of interfering when you're trying to invite those things or you know, those um, well, those new things on the seat. And you might always there trying to, you know, set confusion every year. How do you, how do you, yeah, thank you very much. When you have a situation like that, you need to talk with him, first of all, outside the hearing of the children, privately, nicely let him know the implications of what you're doing and the implications of what he is doing. It is very important that these roles be played in harmony because once the children notice that there's a difference, mom is saying one thing and dad is doing another it will just be a waste of time and the right result will not be will not be get, um, gotten at the end of it so it is important for both husband and wife to cooperate in these roles we're talking about that's why i said today you were talking about mother in the next in the next program we'll be talking about fathers it is not a one-man show it has to be a, a you know an agreement between the father and the mother and peradventure you do not agree with a particular pattern, all you do is excuse madam, excuse your wife, and then 
like or you give a signal or a sign to say that is to say can we g talk inside or that's a bit excessive and then you take the cue so it's very very important for the couple to agree the husband and the wife to agree and cooperate on these tasks because it is quite enormous I don't know whether that helped you but that's what it should be thank you hello 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 Good evening. Yeah, good evening, sir. Yeah, this is calling from Suleja. Oh, how Suleja? Uh, hello. Okay, thanks for calling. Yeah, mine is just, um, I called in to actually appreciate what you people are doing over there. Thank you very much. We really appreciate. May God continue to strengthen you. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. James. For the good work you are doing. Honestly. Thank you we're very much. We're, we're learning a lot. Thank you. Thank God it's useful yes, to thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. So, like I said, the father and the mother must be in harmony. We must agree on what we are doing. Yes, at times it could be excessive on some part or maybe there's an overreaction somewhere. It is very, very important that you do not, you do not, um, disgrace or run down your wife or your husband in the presence of the children yeah welcome back to 91.3 fm radio maria on child protection today we are talking about the things a mother must hear and i decided to call in for your reaction so that we'll have enough time to talk about it today we noticed that most of the time you're calling in we don't have enough time to attend to calls it's our program yours and ours right here in the studio so let the calls roll in and we'll be attending to them one after the other now by the last program we talked about the fact that parents need to follow up bumper to bumper yeah that's a call here hello 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 okay that's network there so we, we talked about parents being in the affairs in the business of their children we must be nosy and most of the time generally in families they want to talk to mom that's why i said to start with the mother yes in some families they prefer to talk to dad because they will say daddy's government is not strong at all and when you when dad is angry he just starts and finishes with it if it's mommy, mommy will wind and wind and wind. Hey, it will not be, it will not end. It will not be over with. So it, it depends on where the children want to tilt. But wherever, whoever they tilt towards, please make sure you're supporting the other person for good. Because once the children notice that there's a disagreement on their upbringing between father and mother, you have lost the discipline of that home because every child always wants to have it soft so if they notice that it's daddy that is the one that is softer that person wants the children want to tilt in that direction and then mommy has to be firm to also pull them and put them back on check and when mommy is doing that daddy is supposed to support Daddy is supposed to back up mom so that there won't be you know a, a, a gap between both of them that is not to say that once in a while dad cannot just say hey that's uh, you've given three strokes of the cane that should be enough or something once in a while and even as you're saying it try to make it a bit um jovial even those ten so the mother knows that though you're smiling a bit that you mean enough is enough and all of that but not to run down anybody before the other your differences would have nothing to do with the discipline of the children the home is not a place for cheap popularity that's not where you begin to play the politics of who is um, closer who is better who is more loving who is more caring and then you begin to jeopardize the children's upbringing by wanting to to play some um, dirty cheap popularity games that is very expensive and we shouldn't meddle with that so now talking about mom being a role model it's a lot I want to I want to pick on that 
when mom is a role model who is a model somebody you want to copy somebody you want to imitate somebody you look up to somebody that you know is your ideal person you want to follow what if the role model is not now that ideal person which means that you as mom you have to be on point you have to be on check uh, you you are eating you are at the table you tell them uh, you don't you don't talk over your meal you don't stretch stretch your hands over somebody's food you you while eating you even when you want to burp or you know pass some wind you you have to be cautious and express some uh, um, courtesy i'm sorry um thank you and all of that your hands should not be dripping you can tell them all these litany of rules to follow and you break all the rules it will not work but as a role model you are telling them do this do that will those things you're asking them to do are even going to be less of spoken words and more of imitation learning by imitation that that is they are watching you they are following what you're doing mommy will do it this way mommy would not like your hands to be dripping mommy is always used holding the napkin in the in the kitchen mommy when mommy is even picking her teeth after food you now she has a way of covering her mouth and using the toothpick to ensure that you don't show people you know whatever you're bringing out and begin to curse people to be a bit irritated mommy also you know it's courteous she knows how to, to say thank you excuse me i'm sorry there's nothing wrong with mommy telling children oh i'm sorry i got it wrong or telling daddy oh sorry um i couldn't pick up the children until i had to call you to please stand in for me because there was a, a sudden staff meeting there's nothing wrong with mommy apologizing to dad in the presence of the children apologizing to the children you know telling the children things that they should know but in a cultured manner not screaming and yelling at the children throwing tantrums but when you're doing all of that of course they are copying they are imitating you you're not happy with daddy from the bedroom and as they are coming out you're banging the door you're throwing things at dad you're even going to the sitting room to destroy things in short you will know who i am today you will know that you show you are married to a mad woman and all of that the children are listening who did that i will kill you today those are not words they're not the kind of language that should be used in a home as a role model what you are going to church going to the mosque going to social going for social um occasions where maybe you are invited and then you are a late comer what about your dressing dress the way you want to be addressed you're telling them be decent be modest make sure you don't expose yourself make sure you don't do this and do that and you are a typical example of what you're saying they should not do it is more of do what i do than do what i say because as children they learn more by imitation they imitate you they imitate whatever they see they came to this world blank tabla rasa you begin to put into them those things your impressions you want to appear on that beautiful gift god has given to you so the prints you put begin to reflect they begin to reflect and if they don't come out right because of you you will have yourself to blame because take note as they are growing up talking about the, the things you need to hear hear it that the task of bringing up a baby from zero to five some say up to seven is very very important because that becomes the foundation and it's usually difficult to change so if you don't get it right from the beginning there's a problem and you, do you know when you're going to repeat all through your life because in adolescence it, it will manifest in adulthood it is even a disaster they call you to the round table and begin to ask you questions yes these ones these babies you're seeing now will ask you questions 
and you will have to answer those questions. They need you to provide the answers to those questions. Same when you're dealing with them. Are you fair? Are you just? As simple as dishing, one helping, two helping, they are watching. Who among the children are you giving three helping, maybe of spaghetti because he likes spaghetti a lot, so you dish more for him and he is, I don't want to even use the word, he's your favorite child. Who did you not go through labor pain for, excuse me? Who will be the favorite child? Yes, you may say when it comes to chores, ah, color is better. When it comes to spirituality, Ngozi is great. When it comes to education, this person is that. They all have their beauty, they have their strength, they have their weaknesses, but none of them is to be taken as an outcast. None of them should be maltreated. What about your house help? They are watching you the way you're treating the house help. The children at times even revolt on behalf of the house help. They tell you, mommy, um, please take, add, add some dodo from my own, take some dodo from my own and give to, to uh, the, the, the help. That is because they feel that you have not been fair in apportioning the food. They take notes. You're sending one child to do this because the child is good, the child is always obedient to you. He's do this, he's do that, he's do that. The other person is on the bed, either watching TV in his or her room or doing some idle thing and then one particular child is overworked until the child starts complaining. Am I the only one in this house? What about this person? What about that person? Moms, we must learn how to strike a balance. We must learn how to be fair and firm. If you say today the boys are in the kitchen or you want to make it balanced, the boy, a boy and a girl is in the kitchen today with you or um, you're talking about somebody being in the kitchen with the cook or maid or whoever or the person is the one taking care of the rooms today. Whoever you have put there, ensure that the person does it. If you're not around because of the type of work you do, when you come back, make them know that you do a follow-up. You would not forget. Yes, how did, what was this particular chore I gave to this person like? Was it properly done? Was it okay? Let them, they will give you the result themselves. Trust siblings. Mommy, he didn't do it well. The, the bed was, the, mark, the bed sheet was not properly tucked in. Uh, the, 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 the version he was supposed to read, the part he was supposed to read from the Bible, you, you said we should use King's, King James. He, you, he read from his phone and so on. Or from the, the holy book. Whatever book the person is supposed to use. The person went to the phone. The per, they will tell you everything. They are open. And always encourage them to speak up. Don't allow the don't tell syndrome to operate in your house. Because that is very, very destructive. A lot, a lot have gone wrong because the children will now start learning how to keep secrets for each other, of one another. A lot of terrible things have happened because of that. So always look out for it. Watch out for a child who, as is speaking, is looking at maybe somebody to get approval or whatever to continue, or somebody is saying, uh, you are telling now, you are telling now. That's a signal that they are beginning to get into some groupings and some very mischievous things in your house and it must be broken they must learn to be open and free in the house they must learn to tell you as much as they can but what encourages that is that you befriend them are you a friendly mother do you listen are you patient enough for them to speak even when it's biting and terrible you must learn to contain it and make sure that what you are hearing, even as much as your ears are exploding, you, you wait to hear everything. And your reaction will tell the next person next time, if he finds himself in that, in that condition, whether to, to mention it to you or not. So, and you need to hear, you need to know, so you can help, you can 
you can intervene, you can protect, you can defend. If you don't hear, Daddy, as I, mommy, as I was going, as I was going to school today, uh, that 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 that's, um, you, that that boy that sells something there, I was now uh, calling, and then you turn. So what did you now say to him? Did you turn? Did you listen? Did you attend? Did you yeah, the child has not finished telling you. You've not heard what her reaction to that situation was. You're already giving multiple questions and before you know, the child will just lock up. What happened? No, dad, mommy, he just did that. I looked at him, hissed and walked away. Mm. Far from the truth. It may have been more than that. But because you blocked it, you will not hear more and you will never hear again the other children also have learned not to tell you the truth. So you will be a stranger right in your own home. They begin to call you from school. This happened. You say, not my child. The other one in the, in the church and the mosque says, uh, these are, no, 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 not my child. Do you know your child? The only way you can know your child is to be, to be friendly. The only way you can know your child is to listen clearly, tolerate, body language a mother is a nosy poker that is you will not mind your business but even as you don't mind your business you also will mind your business with style because of course you know moderation is the the rule of the game and as you're poking and as you're finding out you are eavesdropping you're listening it is not even everything you hear you react to immediately especially when it's not you know a, a dangerous uh, um, it's not an emergency then weekend you can call them together to say somebody was talking about this 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 somewhere and this one this this other thing happened does that kind of thing happen in my house by themselves they will say this person did this the other person did that and mommy it happened but even the other day we were talking that's how so you begin to listen and you already know what you want to say you already know where you're going because you are the judge you are the nurse, you are the cook. No, you know that little girl, mama na mama, this, this, that, and she said all the things that mama will do on Mother's Day. That is it, mama na mama. Mama is an encyclopedia of the family. She knows it all, she interprets it. But is it true that you know it all? So you must update. So there's need for you to learn the skills of parenting. So you must learn how to master the situation and what to do even when you are in pains as a mother yes i know that we have a mastery of that a lot of mothers they are hungry their children are also hungry they give up the, their food including their portion ah mommy where's your own ah me i've been in the kitchen do you know the things i do when i'm in the kitchen just because they want to cover up to ensure that children take that much yes there are mothers who have had to go and learn how to do one or two skills because they want their children to to get you know also acquire that skill there are mothers who have had to take on blames and all that to protect their children but when they get in they say no you see that thing you did i didn't want them to do this i didn't want them to lynch you i didn't want them to do that that was horrible that was a near miss you don't dare where did you bring that from what is the problem come and talk to me how did that happen? Somebody is smelling of something here. What happened? Maybe you're able to find out what the person is. You take the person into your room. Come dear. What happened? I can perceive some alcohol. What happened dear? Talk to me. Mommy, it's not me. It, it just uh, they were some, some of my classmates uh, smuggled something to school and then it poured on my dress. Dear. How come you were there when they were sharing this drink and it now poured on your dress? If the school authority gets to know about it, your name is, you know, is going to be number one on that list because it's smelling all over you and all of that. You begin to tell the child the implications of these situations. So as a role model, you are that one that they see that is considerate, that is moderate, that is firm, that is strict, but listens to them but has their back, you are there to protect them, you do not throw them out for condemnation, for destruction, and all of that. You are not abandoning them through thick and thin, you are there for them. 
then you become their superstar then you become their queen then you become their role model now you all of these you're doing you're helping them to know how to eat you're teaching them how to take on a conversation you're teaching them hygiene especially when it is now time for the girls to flow you do not wait until the men has come one or two years before the time you're already telling them the things to do per adventure it just starts because these days you find eight-year-olds nine-year-olds already talking about menstrual pain or menstruation setting in a lot of developments now have changed pattern maybe because of proper medical care and all of the good food they take unlike before you know in those days where they told us that some people would not even you know have their menses some girls will be there till 16 years some 15 so they're coming down to 13 down to 12. look at the little girl that was uh, uh, um, was abused violated by that elderly man remember she had her baby at nine which means of course menses for such a person setting maybe by eight years or eight and a half so to have the baby by nine by eight she was already menstruating so we must teach them what they need to know when we are not around and when we are around and basically teach them to do what is right whether somebody is there or not do right do the right thing because it's good to do it and because it is pleasing to god and good for man not because you don't want to be punished do it because it is right do it because it's pleasing to god do it because it's good for your neighbor do it because it will give you satisfaction and joy not because you don't want to be punished so when you are in a place where you will not be punished you will do it when you are in a place where you think you will not be seen you will do it that would be a wrong motive the right motive is to do it because it is right because you fear god and because it's good for your neighbor and for yourself love your neighbor as yourself love your neighbor for us christians we say love your neighbor as christ loved and cherished the church he you know he's our model and for our brothers they have a model that they follow so make sure you do not teach them to only act right to avoid punishment we talk about corrections these days we don't talk about punishments and when you're trying to correct a child or sanction a child it should be commensurate with what the child has done you don't heap up the one the child did last year this year together lump them up and then you carry the child and you want to to use an axe to break the child and cut the child into pieces accumulate all the pains and then unleash no attend to the situations as they come an institution where you do not have the time to attend to the situation when you want to attend to the situation don't go and gather all the ones that have been done you know even in africa we say it's not the day that the child breaks the pot that you ask the child so when the child now breaks pot one pot two pot three you now gather, bring the child and gather all the pots that the child has broken and say today i will break you like the pot right although another interpretation is there that there are times you you turn away your face from certain things that are mild but I, we begin to wonder how mild some of these things are you know so it is very important as a role model to be the mirror to be to be the the reflection of what you want them to be so when they're looking at you you are the bible you are the book you are the etiquette you are the, the, the discipline you want them to be ah mommy will not do it this way ah, mommy will do it that way mommy will not take it this way mommy will like to do this this way you hear some children say, ah, my mother will be very angry because the child already knows what to expect from mother. Oh, mom will like this. My mother will like this, you know. So you be the role model. And as you're doing that, you're teaching them how to be, to have good confidence. You're teaching them how to coordinate. You're giving them self-esteem. You are teaching them how to be loving and all that. As you're nurturing them, you're raising them up. You're teaching them the different things that will be put together to make them that positive human being that will contribute greatly to 
the economy that will bring about sustainable development that will bring about nigeria ranking with the world don't we have all of those in you know potentials here in nigeria we do but the first problem is from the home right back at the home whether we are accusing people of corruption whether we are saying people are rogues people are violent people are this that whatever names that are on right now they started from the home if the home did not show them hostility if the home did not show them violence if the home did not neglect or abandon them if the home did not teach them how to cheat how to short change um, tell your daddy you bought that book for 10,000 naira uh, I bought it for 6,000 naira you, you take 1,000 for your snack and that is it it's 10,000 because if I ask him for that feeding allowance now he will not bring it so the best thing is let's just take it from this book yes you're going to use it to feed the child you're not buying gold or buying earrings with it fine but do you know you have already taught the child something how to be dishonest it is a terrible problem when daddy is not supportive in terms of your uh, or giving you enough house keeping money or upkeep or provision but it is also good to let the child know that this book was bought for for six thousand naira give the change to daddy and let daddy know what more you need or you write your own list of what more you need whether you get it or not does not you know matter it, it's not as serious as the damage you're causing because you want to make up for whatever fault the father has so uh, I would also want to say again that mothers are great people you have the nation in a nation in every woman they do more than we can imagine especially when we sit down to think of the risk of childbearing the, the, all that it takes for conception and all that it takes to nurture, make sure the child is in school, make sure the child has the right spiritual upbringing and great things that mothers do. I would say keep doing that wonderful job, that great role of a woman, a mother that you are. And of course, may you reap the fruit of your labor in abundance god bless you all mothers there we love you thanks for the great sacrifices for the self-denials for every single sacrifice you have put in to make sure that our homes reflect on our society and our society reflects on the world god bless you bye bye